Welcome to another smashing episode of Beyond the Plate with Chef Amrita Raichand and me, Rishi K. I tell you this, so many of you wrote to us after watching and listening to our Gandhi Jayanti episode. I feel very calm and tranquil when I read <laughs> those messages. And believe you me, I did go on a Loki diet <laughs> for a day. <laughs> I still find it hard I to mean, believe, Rishi. For a day, for a day, for a day, for a day. <laughs> Even a day is difficult for you. <laughs> it is. But today we're going to be talking about what could be one of my favorite days. Mm. Mm. So reveal it. Should I? Yeah. I thought you will be the one to talk about it because I'm pretty sure this is one of your favorite days. It is the International Beer and Pizza Day. Yay! <laughs> you know, Donald Duck comics. I don't know if you ever read them when you were a kid. Donald Duck comics and Donald Duck animation movies used to have Donald's uncle called Uncle Scrooge. Mm. Uncle Scrooge was an extremely wealthy man and he used to have an obsession with money. So he had a vault in which he used to collect all his currency and he would just dive into the vault and sit there with all his money because that was his fascination with money. I don't have a fascination with money, but I could sit in a vault full of my favorite beverage <laughs> and pizza all day. Absolutely. We have all grown up with watching Donald Duck. But uh, but while you were talking about that story, I could actually visualize you in that vault. I'm not sure if it was a happy visual. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this day because, you know, uh, the fact is that they pair so beautifully together. Uh, in fact, they uh, enhance and contrast uh, each other's flavors. And interestingly, both are produced out of cereal grains. I want to know the genius who said today should be a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, the name of that genius was Nick Solino. And in 2016, he actually requested for this day to become a nice celebrated holiday. He wanted to pay homage to one of the most iconic food and drink combinations of the earth where people of so many different cultures from all over the world enjoy beer and pizza. I mean, it is a day to indulge and be happy. But Rishi, more so for you and also for our audiences, just because it's uh, a day to be celebrated doesn't mean that we overindulge. Uh, please go back and listen to our Gandhiji's episode. If you've missed it, go to the YouTube channel of Radio 1 and you'll see the entire video recording. It'll tell you, do everything with discipline and in moderation. Now, coming back to Beer and Pizza Day, I believe beer is one of the oldest beverages produced by mankind. Yes. It's brewed from cereal grains, which contains starch, sugars, produces ethanol and carbonation during the fermentation process. That's something that Amrita sent me in her notes. <laughs> but I'm keen on knowing the history. How far back are we talking? 5000 BC, believe it or not. And it was recorded uh, by Mesopotamia and ancient Egyptians. Uh, you know, earlier there were a lot of waterborne diseases. And then people had very little knowledge uh, of where these illnesses were coming from and they didn't really know how to combat it. So believe it or not, they considered beer safer to consume rather than, than plain water. water. Yes. Yeah, and uh, in fact, ancient Egyptians included beer at every level of their food chain. It also became uh, the preferred drink of the slaves working on the pyramids as it used to provide that much needed calories, those proteins, uh, you know, that you need when you are doing a hard day of labor. Yeah, and I imagine that it started small scale. It uh, yes. started with family business, businesses and breweries, you know, dotted across, uh, uh, you know, the West. And suddenly then it became a large scale export kind of industry, didn't it? Absolutely. And in fact, it was a craft which was very cherished by families. You know, it was passed down as a family oriented activity. And you rightly said today, it's, of course, uh, you know, much talked about in a much commercial industry. But um, I think that's enough uh, talking about uh, beer early in the morning. Why don't we now move our discussion to the spouse of beer? Actually, I must ask you this. What do you think? Uh, between pizza and beer, who would be the wife and who would be the husband? Beer would be the husband. Beer um, would be the husband? Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it has nothing to do with who consumes more of it. I mean, I'm sure lots of you ladies like consuming beer as a beverage. But I just get the feeling that uh, a bloated paunch that eventually <laughs> lots of beer drinking will give you 
It's a more man thing. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. And then are the feminine. <laughs> All right. So let's let's call it that. I while I was writing, I said spouse, and then that question came to my mind. That what would it really be? But I'm going to go with your take on Look it. Look at the origins of of the pizza. I mean, I always thought pizza means Italian. Italian means pizza. I mean, mm. it's, just a, it's such a no-brainer, isn't it? Yes, it is. Is that true? False? Absolutely false, absolutely false. Wow. Believe it or not, it was made by the Greeks and Egyptians and not Italians. Pepperoni may be uh, probably the most popular pizza topping in the world, but in ancient times, the Greeks and Egyptians coated their flat bread pizza with only olive oil and spices. It was introduced to Italy when a Greek settlement reached Rome in 600 BC and carried with it the recipe and methodology of the now famous pizza. Wow. Interesting. And I believe yeah? that there was actually a margarita who existed. Yes. Yeah, so. A lady called Margarita, which is what the Margarita pizza is named after. Yeah. But tell us about that. So we'll come to Margarita, but I want to add here that the word pizza itself uh, is actually a modern day term. So when in 600 BC, when we were talking about those days, it wasn't called pizza. It originated in uh, the name pizza originated in Italy's southwestern Campania region in the city of Naples. Mm. So Carol um, Helstowski, who's the author of Pizza, A Global History and Associate Professor of History at the University of Denver, states that Naples in the 1700s and early 1800s was an independent kingdom on the waterfront. But the people there were actually very poor. Um, and since there was a lot of business at the waterfront, these Neapolitans required inexpensive food that could be consumed quickly. Now, pizza, flatbreads with various toppings eaten for any meal and sold by street vendors or informal restaurant met with this need. Hell's Toski actually uh, notes that these pizzas consumed by Naples poor featured the tasty garnishes that we enjoy today, such as tomatoes, cheese, anchovies, um, garlic. So I imagine that's where the Napolitano, Napolitana pizza came from. Yes. Because, you know, when you go to Italy, there's the margarita, the Napolitana, but you still haven't told me uh -huh. what margarita is. I'm coming to that the story now. <laughs> yes, so now when uh, Italy unified in 1861 and King Umberto I and Queen Margarita visited Naples, in 1889, legend has it that the traveling pair became quite bored with their steady uh, diet of uh, French or cuisine and asked for an assortment of pizzas. Now, what happened was asked for an assortment of pizzas from the city's Di Pietro Pizzeria, founded in 1760. The variety the Queen enjoyed most was called Pizza Mozzarella, a pie topped with soft white cheese, red tomatoes and green basil. From then on, the story goes, that particular topping combination was dubbed pizza. Margarita. There you go. In fact, I think there is no coincidence that her favorite pie featured the colors of the Italian flag as well. What do you think? Well, yeah, <laughs> come to think of it, yes. But, you know, wherever the Italians go, they take their food with them, isn't it? Mm. I mean... One of the earliest immigrants to New York City, for example, were Italians. And some of them not very genteel Italians because the mafia from Sicily moved to America, which is why movies like The Godfather yes. came to be made. Mario Puzo wrote novels about uh, the Sicilian warlords who started ruling America. Al Capone and all these gangsters yes. coming straight off the boat from Italy. And they obviously took their food with them. So, yeah, that, that's exactly what happened. The Napolitans were coming for factory jobs, as did millions of Europeans in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And they weren't really looking to make a culinary statement. Yet, relatively quickly, the flavors and aromas of pizza began to intrigue non-Napolitans uh, and non-Italians. Now, what do you, you don't blame them, right? Pizza is so yummy, so True. delicious. It became the favorite of every American as well. I'm just curious to know, I mean, there are pizzerias in every street corner in New York City now. But would you know about the earliest or one of the earliest pizzerias that existed in America? Yeah, it seems like I have all your answers today. <laughs> well, it was in 1905 that the first documented American pizzeria um, was uh, created. It was called Gennaro Lombardi on Spring Street in Manhattan. Lombardi. Oh. Very good pizza. <laughs> Guys, the Ask Amrita section comes up at the end of this show. All you have to do is WhatsApp us at 9833-943-943. 9833-943-943 along with your question. It could be on food. 
could be in beer and pizzas, could be on an episode gone by, which is Gandhi Jayanti, anything you want. Amrita is sensitive enough to pick up every single question and answer it. Also coming up uh, is the recipe of the day. It's filmed in its entirety in Amrita's beautiful studio kitchen. You can find it on Instagram at 94.3 Radio 1 India. Also on Instagram at Amrita Raichand. And a longer version exists on Amrita Raichand's Chef and Beyond, the YouTube channel. So that is what is coming up next. The show, remember, comes to you in audio form, 94.3 Radio 1, Mondays, 8.15 a.m. 48 hours later, on Wednesday, it's on the Radio 1 International YouTube channel in video form in its entirety. So the recipe of the day has got to be pizza. Indeed. And what pizza are we talking about? So interestingly, Rishi, uh, when I was wondering what pizza recipe should I share today, I realized that I've made tons of pizzas. I have uh, the classic pizza made with yeast, uh, where the, you know, the dough is made with yeast. And then I have uh, things like cauliflower pizza. I've mixed nachni in my pizza base and have created many recipes and all of them are available to watch on my YouTube channel, Amrita Raichan, uh, Chef and Beyond. So today I decided to make an instant pizza for you guys just in case you suddenly crave a pizza, just in case the delivery option is not available and you want a pizza in less than half an hour, this recipe is the answer. So I'm going to tell you what to do. So basically you take uh, maida, which is all-purpose flour. We've got, uh, we'll take about 200 grams of the same. We'll add a pinch of salt to it, about uh, half a teaspoon of sugar. And then we're going to add half a teaspoon of baking powder. Now we're going to bring this together with curd. About three tablespoons of curd is all that it takes to really bring together uh, this entire mixture like a semi-dry uh, um, dough. Then after you've brought it together, you add some olive oil and I would highly recommend extra virgin oil to stick to certain, uh, you know, basics of a good pizza. And then you knead the dough for about 10 to 12 minutes uh, till, the, till the gluten starts developing. Then you leave it uh, on the side for another 10, 12 minutes and you bake it for another 10 minutes at about 180 degrees. Of course, when you bake it, you add your pizza sauce, you add your, uh, you know, mozzarella cheese, you top it with either your non-vegetarian, uh, you know, pe pepperoni or uh, some peppers. That's completely up to you. And you bake it for about 10 to 15 minutes and serve it hot with some chili flakes and oregano. How does that sound? Yum, delicious. <laughs> and closing down the beer and pizza day special is the Ask Amrita section. Yes, Tanya. Amrita, people usually say coffee helps in boosting one's metabolism, but can it aid in relieving digestive issues? And does it help in weight loss? So Tanya, your question has the answer in it. The very fact uh, that you have stated that coffee increases metabolism, clearly it will also aid in weight loss because the moment your metabolism is high, you will burn off more calories indirectly leading to weight loss. And you know, you must know that not one thing can be touted as the reason that causes weight loss. There are many things. It's a lifestyle change. Now, coming to digestive issues, as per a new research, coffee has actually positive effects on digestion and the gut and protects against common digestive complaints uh, such as gallstones and um, even some liver diseases. So yes, there is some theory about it helping with digestive um, issues. Uh, but I think uh, what I love coffee for more is the fact that it keeps me sprightly and gets me, uh, you know, gives me that kickstart that I need to the, to the day. Kickstarting <laughs> another episode of Beyond the Plate with Chef Amrita Raich and the Meerishi K. That's going to happen only next Monday. So you have yourself a nice break and come back next Monday at 8.15 a.m. right here on 94.3 Radio 1. And if you're interested in watching us uh, on video form, Wednesday, two days later, the entire video is up on the Radio 1 International YouTube channel. And of course, uh, keep checking out our socials. It's at Amrita Raichand uh, on Instagram, at 94.3 Radio 1 India on uh, Instagram again for our radio station. Thank you for your time. Happy beer and pizza day. Thank you, guys. Enjoy this day. But like I said earlier, please do not overindulge because everything needs to be done in moderation. Enjoy yourselves. See you next week. 94.3 Radio 1.